Okay guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create the bronze plumb bob. Now this one is pretty simple. It just requires a few rev revolutions, a few extrusions, and our part should be completed. Now this one is in the metric system, so when you go to create new file, make sure that you click on the pull down menu for ENUS, go to the metric file, and then make sure that you click on standard MMIPT. Now as you see, nothing looks different, but that's normal with Inventor. So let's go ahead and get started. For the plumb bob, we are going to be starting on the XY plane. Let's draw the general shape of what the plumb bob looks like. To me, it looks like an arrowhead. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw something that looks like half of an arrowhead. Now I don't have any dimensions, and I do that for a reason. As long as I have the general shape of what it is that I am trying to create, then I, I'll add dimensions and everything will grow into the correct uh, proportions as the dimensions change. So the first dimension that I'm going to add is the overall height, which is 117.5 millimeters. Now, as you see, it should have grown, but unfortunately it didn't. That's okay. This angled line, I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. This is going to be 50.8. This vertical line, 19. And then this, we don't need to dimension that since this plus this, uh, or I mean, if, if we had this and we subtracted these two, we would get this final dimension. So now let's go ahead and add our um, diameters. For this, since we are doing a revolution, remember that we're going to have to divide our diameters in half to get radiuses because when we do a revolution, we are doubling our radius, which will give us our diameter. So from here to here, this is 38. That's our radius, or that's our diameter, but we're going to divide it by two and say okay. And then this up here, this is 19 divided by two, and we are done. Go ahead and finish your sketch, and let's revolve. So go up here to the revolve button, the revolve button, and we it automatically chooses our profile for us. All we have to select is the axis. This is the axis line that we we will be revolving around. So once you have that, say OK. And this part is almost done. We just need to add our hole up here. So go to hole, it brings up this dialog box, and we want our hole to be on this top portion. Click here, and then make sure that you click on the outer green um, circle. This will make sure that it's concentric. Now in the book, when you look at this, it doesn't give us any indication as to how big this hole is, and that's when you have to use our context clues to figure out what this diameter will be. We look at the cap picture, and in the cap, it tells us that the diameter of the thread is M12 by 175. So I'm just going to click here. I'm going to choose that it is a tap hole, which means that it's threaded. And all I have to do is switch it over from ANSI Unified Screw Threads to ANSI Metric M. So once you do that, all we have to do is adjust this to 12. We just have to find 12, find 12. And then make sure that this matches what the book says. M12 by 175. Once you have that, then we just have to tell it how deep to make this. So we're going to say that there's a termination. The termination is 24 
0.5 and that's it. Once you have that, go ahead and say OK and our hole is now threaded. The last step that we need to do is add our, our fillets are going to be three millimeters. So change it over to three and we're going to select this edge, this edge, and this edge. Once you have that, say okay. And this part is almost done. And now all we need to do is change the color by returning it over into brass. I'm sorry, bronze. So just go to bronze and find that. And actually, I think we're also going to change the material over to bronze cast. Okay, so once you have that, let's go ahead and save this. And we are going to be saving this into a new folder. And I'm going to create a folder and call this uh, Plumbob. Once you have that, double click into your Plumbob folder and call this the Plumbob. All right, so now let's make a new part file. We are again going to be choosing a standard MM ICT, and we are going to be working on the XY plane. For this, we are again going to be creating a revolution. So we are just going to go ahead and create our profile. For this, we're going to be creating a T or an upside down L looking profile. That's what we want. And now we just have to dimension it. The overall height of this is going to be 33. This section here is going to be 25.4. Our diameter is going to be 20. The diameter we just need to divide in half. So since it's 20, we're going to change it to 10. And then here, down here on the bottom, we just change this to 6. Once you have all of this, go ahead and finish your sketch. And then we are revolving it. It automatically chooses our um, profile. All we have to do is choose our axis and say OK. Now you may be wondering why I chose 20 as our diameter rather than what it says as 18. Now the reason I did that is because the hexagon is 18. We have to create a hexagon and cut it out from this circle that is 20. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create a sketch right here up on the top. And we're going to go to the pull down menu of rectangle and change that to polygon. Hexagons have six sides. So make sure that you Choose the hex or choose the option that has six sides, and you can make a large hexagon like I did. And now we're going to use our constraints. We're going to make sure that one of these lines is horizontal, which is now horizontal. And then we are going to say from right to left, or in this case from front to back, this is 18. Now, as you can see, it's not quite where I wanted it to be, but that's fine. We're just going to go ahead and go like this. And then because we are cutting out the hexagon shape, it means that we're cutting out this outside. So I do have to make a larger circle. So that way, when I go to choose a profile, it will choose my large outside rather than my inside. So once you have this, Go ahead and extrude. I'm going to select this and I'm going to turn it so that way it's extruding down. Once you have that, go ahead and say OK. Now it quite doesn't look like what the book has, but that's fine. It's the general idea. Next, we need to add a hole. 
your coal, we are going to put on this bottom face. So click on that bottom face, add a hole here. Make sure that you select that it is concentric with this bottom side. So I'm going to select my green circle. And this hole on the bottom has a diameter. It is a counter bore. So I do have to re-enter my information. 4.78, it goes down 25.4. And I'm just going to say this one is 30. And my bottom number down here, this is 1.6. All right. So let's zoom out so we can see what's happening. What it has done is it has created this large column right here, this hole that is 4.78 in diameter. When it touches right here with our hexagon, it creates a smaller hole. So now that we have these two parts, or these two holes added, let's go ahead and thread the outside of this part. So we're going to go to thread up here at the top. We're going to choose this surface, and it automatically selects everything based on the size that we gave it. So now that you have this, go ahead and say OK. And now we just have to change the color of this and the material to bronze cast, and it automatically switches over to the right color. Oh, I see that the hole didn't actually go all the way through. So let me change that to true all. And now we are done. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this part as the cap. Now that we have these two parts done, all we have to do is assemble them. So let's go to New. Make sure that you stay in the metric system and find standard MMIAM. This is our regular assembly. Now we are going to bring in our two, oops. We're going to bring in our plumb bob first. And we're going to zoom out so we can see the whole thing. This is exactly the way that we wanted. So we're going to right click and go place grounded at origin. The reason why we ground it is so that way it doesn't move when we start adding more, more parts. Bring in the cap next. And these are the only two things that we need for this entire project. We just now have to constrain them. So go to your constrain button. Find the center line of our cap, which is this one, and find the center line of our plumb bob, which is this one, and it puts them together. Now all we're going to do is make sure that this surface of our plumb bob touches the bottom edge or the bottom surface of our cap and apply. Now this should be the completed part. It spins around in a circle, which is fine. And now we are going to save this as the plumb bob assembly. And now we will create the IPN or the presentation file, the exploded assembly file. So go down to standard MM IPN, select that, and it knows that we are working with an assembly and we want to choose our plumb bob. So click open and there's our part. All we need to do is tweak our components, so I'm just going to tweak our cap, and I want to move it for, well, not four millimeters, I want to move it 50 millimeters, and say OK, and now I can play it 
after that I show the ex the the animation or I can reverse it to show how it actually goes together. Go ahead and save this as your Bum Bob Assembly IPN. And now we just lay it out on a sheet. Remember that we did create a title block. So go back to your ENUS folder and click on your title block. Once you have this, we're going to place both our exploded assembly. And I kind of don't really like the way that it looks like this. So I'm going to go to my front view. I'm going to rotate it so it's flat and then show the isometric. And then that way it fits a little bit better on my page. But go ahead and say OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and find my different parts that I want to dimension. I'm going to start off with my actual plumb bob. And I want to place it over here on this side. And let's see if one to one scale fits. Yes, it does. Now, since it's a cylindrical object, if I were to place my side view, it looks exactly like my front view. So I technically don't need that side view. All I need a front view and a top view. So go ahead and say OK. That's all we need. And all I'm going to do is delete my side view. Readjust this. And there you go. That's what I want. Next thing that I'm going to be doing is adding my cap. Now, two to one is obviously too big. So let's go ahead and choose one to one. Same thing. The side view would look exactly the same as my front view. So I'm just going to choose my front view and my top view and say OK. That's all I need. It is your responsibility to add the titles or the actual labels under each part since there are two, there are two parts. You do need a parts list. You also need to make sure that you add a cover sheet with your name on it and that you have all the dimensions necessary for this part. If you guys have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you guys in the next video.